What up world? Let's look at matching clips from different cameras in Resolve. Four scenes, three different cameras. First three scenes are the FX3 and the Mini LF, as usual. Fourth scene is the Alexa 35 and the Mini LF. If only you knew how I was getting the audio here. Picked up this baby, 200 bucks. In each scene, the cameras were shot at the same settings, but there are definitely differences between them. So let's just take a look at what I've done already to match them. This is the clip that I started with, applied a grade, and then used that grade on every clip that you see in here. So shot one, LF, FX3. They are looking damn close to me. Scene two, mini LF, FX3. Mini LF, FX3. Mini LF, Alexa 35. These two are a little bit easier to match. I will go to a new timeline. I've taken off the grades on all these clips. So all of these clips were placed in a group and the grade was placed on the group post clip. So it applies to all clips. It's just what we do before the grade that gets them to the point that they can accept that grade. And we'll start with the first one. Same grade as on both of them. They are much different. But if we look back at what we had before, they are matching up very nicely. And I've prepped just empty node trees for these. This one is for the Mini LF. This one is for the FX3. The only difference is the color space transform here to move the FX3 to log C3. So the purpose of the color space transform is so that I can prepare different clips from different cameras to receive or pipe into a look that's supposed to be applied to a certain color space or gamma. So I'm gonna grab a still, command option G, and I'm gonna go over and add that still here. I have the HDR wheels, which are mapped to the Alexa because it's coming after the color space transform. Same HDR wheels right here. And the reason for using HDR wheels is for exposure, at least the HDR wheels mapped to the proper color space and gamma will adjust your exposure extremely close to how exposure changes look in camera. I have a white balance here an adjustment and just an adjustment in case I need to do anything extra. But let's just see what we can do just in the HDR. Okay, so we'll bring our exposure up. You can see right here, there's some work to be done. And I'm just gonna start moving around the, the global. That's close, maybe we bring it down a little bit. I'm not even looking at the image. Okay, that's pretty close. Just with an HDR move, we are here. My sweatshirt looks different and the saturation in my face looks different. My sweatshirt here, you can see is two different colors. So I'm gonna just go with in the shadows, which you need to be careful moving these around and just do little moves. So we brought up the shadows a little bit and my sweatshirt in the reference is a little more green and my face, it's a little less saturated. So maybe I'll just bring down this saturation a touch. Pull some red out of the global. I mean, when I'm looking at it, I can't see the line right here, but flipping back and forth, I can see that the highlights are different. So let's just change the light a little bit. Little tiny move. It's looking pretty close. Change the global a little bit. So we'll go back to the shadows and just change these shadows a touch. So this is looking fairly close. When I'm flipping back and forth, that's pretty close to me. So everything was done here in the HDR wheels and they're called HDR wheels, but we're not dealing with any HDR deliverables or anything here. The reason that we're using them is because you can map them to specific color spaces and gammas. You could go further than this if you want, with like hue versus saturation or hue versus hue, but for now, I mean, this is close. Okay, next shot, I'm gonna do the same exact thing. We wanna bring things up a bit here. So I'm just gonna bring this up. In my original test, I just kinda of warmed it up a bit. Have a bit of a golden glow to it. That looks fine for me. Grab a still, go over to the Sony. I am going to bring up my exposure to match. I'm just looking at the scopes, that's close. So we need to make this a little warmer and we can see the difference here. And I'm just gonna start riding this, pushing it towards warmth, looking at the scopes over here, trying to make them match as well. Bring this up a little bit. That is pretty close right off the bat. That's close enough that I'm not gonna keep working on this one. Next one, I'm going to do something a little different here. We'll bring up the exposure a touch, add some contrast, maybe pull a little bit of blue in there. Okay, so let's say we like this grade. Grab a still, bring it over to the Sony. And for this, since I changed the contrast, I'm just gonna copy this. And remember, they are the same mapping because the HDR on the Sony is coming after the color space transform. So our contrast is now the same. And I'm gonna bring up our exposure and I'm gonna roll, roll this global wheel. And for this, I'm gonna start by just looking 
at the viewer, not the scopes. That's close. Now I can see that it's underexposed. Bring up the exposure a little. Once that line starts disappearing, bring down the exposure a little bit so that my face can match a little more. These are living in the same world. And again, this is just in the HDR. You can make more adjustments if you need. If this blue, if this blue is bothering you, you know, you can go Hue V Hue or Hue V Sat and adjust that. So LF, Sony, LF, Sony, LF, Sony. When I'm working on this stuff, I occasionally need to check the actual clip. I sometimes need to turn these on and have the codec showing just to make absolute sure. That's how powerful just, you know, making just these moves in the HDR wheels are. All right, last clip. Grade is applied. Uh, Mini LF, Alexa 35. I'm gonna apply my Mini LF node tree and the Sony FX3 node tree just because I didn't save one for the Alexa 35 yet. And I'm just gonna change this color space transform to log C4 and output log C3. And let's say we wanna to match to the Alexa 35 and we like this grade right here. Take a still, put it on the mini LF. Bring down this exposure, adjust our color a little bit to where I can't see the line anymore. That looks pretty good. Now we go to the face. Sometimes you just gotta go back and forth. So 35 is a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna bring some warmth into here. Pull out some of the pink. It's good to bring this to multiple different areas. So while I can't see it right here, I can see it right here. So I'm gonna roll this, adjust our exposure a little bit, and that works for me. So one quick recap. and what I had before that I spent a little more time on. All right, that's it. I would say we were successful there. I gotta go get a haircut. Peace.